in this video, we are going to give our family room a nice spring update. We're going to organize our toys. I'm going to clean it. We are really going to get in every nook and cranny and corner in this video. Let's begin. If you're new here, my name is Erica Lucas and I share videos about minimalism, decluttering, organizing everything that's left, basically making life simple. This is what it looks like at the start of this organization project. Our living room has two desks, one for me, one for the kids, uh, a sectional sofa, a cabinet under the window, and then a big toy shelf. We also have this fireplace on which the TV is wall mounted above. And uh, there's just a lot of spots where clutter accumulates. And recently I shared a video about stuff and the gravity of stuff. And this toy shelf in particular is weighing me down. It is pulling me to the earth, the gravity of stuff. So I asked the kids to gather some of the toys that they'd liked from their bedrooms to be downstairs, specifically their train tracks and what they use for building blocks to create cities and towns when they do train tracks. So they wanted that downstairs instead of up in their bedrooms. And so we brought that down to organize as well. The first thing I did was involve the kids. These are their toys, they are responsible for them. I will help them organize, but it is, I did charge them with this project, at least the first half where we did the toys. And they, the first thing they needed to do was to clear off the shelves. And I allowed them to just pull everything into the middle of the family room. They could dump it if they wanted, because really every bin that was on here had been played with for months and wasn't necessarily cleaned up Organize, with organization in mind. They just tidy their toys every day, but they just put them in whatever bin was closest. And a lot of times they will combine categories. Duplos will be combined with train tracks. And then when they get cleaned up, they, they don't get individually put back into bins. And that's okay. It's, you know, the, it was tidied up. They did their job. They built the habits of cleaning up after themselves. And every couple of months, we just sort everything. We use it as an opportunity to declutter and give things away to other families. So that was the first thing and the gravity of stuff I wanted to start with the toy shelf. It's a beautiful shelf when it's all empty. And uh, so we pulled everything out from underneath as well. They set out some toys, some dirt, and I just charged them with getting everything into a pile in the middle of the room so we could start organizing. Now what we're gonna do is deal with the pile, the mess that we made, as well as the, God bless you, as well as the bins here that have some things in them as well. You may decide you want train tracks and city building. It used to be in the boys' room. You might want it down here now, okay? And that's okay for us to, yeah, Jackie, I think so, because you really like playing with it, right, buddy? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna have to decide what we're gonna keep on the toy shelf, what we're gonna put in your rooms, and what we're gonna give to another, another family, other kids that we just don't wanna play with anymore, but another kid might, okay? And we're gonna donate that, okay? So we're gonna have to go one thing at a time and make our way through. Yes, Jackson? I know what. This one up for because I'm done. You're done with that? I'm also done. So that might be nice. All right, so we'll make a pile for donation, okay guys? Okay. All right, so when you've decided to keep something, it needs to go in a basket, okay? So like all the dominoes should go together. All the Lincoln logs should go together. All the Duplos should go together. Okay, you guys? This is a project my older two kids have done many times now. So they're used to it. They know how long it takes. And we allow a lot of space and time to go through each thing and decide what we want to do with it. They sometimes play with something for a little while that they haven't noticed for a good amount of time and they want to play with it again. And I just had to continually remind them of what the project is we're working on and why we're doing it and allow them to make the decisions. They definitely kept more than I was thinking they would keep as they went through the piles, but it's on, that's on them. If they chose to play with something and they chose to keep something, I wasn't going to dictate to them what they needed to do. On the side, I did pull out pieces that were trash, uh, puzzles that were incomplete, that kind of thing. I, I did that part of it for them and with them. But ultimately, if they decided to choose 
to keep something. I didn't argue with them. I didn't try to talk them out of it. I let them go through it. So this part of the clean and cozy family room project for spring took a long time. It probably took us two hours to be able to get through all of their toys. And we spent time playing with it and talking about things and how they wanted it to go back onto the shelf. And so it's really been a nice part of Simple Living to be able to do a project like this for a morning and take our time and not feel rushed because we have a million other things we have to go do. We allowed space and time in our day to do something this like this and make it enjoyable. We had music on, uh, the kids would take breaks and eat snacks, and we just gave it a lot of time to go through it. And then we started to figure out how we wanted to organize everything that they decided to keep. And I had bins that were already on there. I've got miscellaneous baskets that I've picked up on Facebook Marketplace or I purchased online along the way through the years. So they had ways of sorting and organizing everything. And even my five-year-old did a great job. It's it's something that we've conditioned them to do, to pay attention to their stuff. And then it's okay to, you know, tidy up and put things away. But when we need to do a project like this, that it's all hands on deck. Whoever's home is a helper. And if you, these are your toys. And if you want me to do it, I'll be coming through with a trash bag <laughs> or a donate bag if you want me to organize your toys. And so they really take ownership of that. We have a lot of open-ended play toys like blocks or Gravitrax, Duplos, Legos, Mesos, a lot of things where they can use their imagination to create something. And every time they play with it, it's something different. We have, um, you know, close ended toys as well, where it's a very specific puzzle or something that they need to do. And it's the same thing every time. So they have a mixture of toys that that have been held on to for years now. The only new thing that we have is Gravitrax, and that came as a result of Christmas. It's a really great STEM toy, and all three kids enjoy playing it. Okay, we have it mostly sorted. And then we've got a stack of books, pile of trash, that's Becca's blanket project, some stuff that she's chosen to keep some pencils, we found a quarter, and we still need to sort this, this, and the Duplos. This is not really a, like a great thing to use because they don't really play with it because they can't see to the bottom and they have to dump it to get to the pieces that they're looking for. So I wanna make this more practical for use, the Duplos. Okay, let's get some stuff on the shelf so we can create ourselves some space. My oldest here is eight and a half, and he's a really great helper on a project like this. And he's starting to grow out of playing with toys. He will play with his brother and his sister, and he loves creating cities and architecture. But his interests lie more in video games now <laughs> than playing with toys. It's just something he's been outgrowing. But he only gets a limited amount of screen time to do those video games. And so the interest in these toys for him is definitely still there, which I love. And I will continue to foster until he just flat out refuses to play. This is a Hot Wheels car carrier that my mom got for the kids. And my youngest loves playing cars. And he likes putting all of his cars in one spot like this. And he carries his suitcase around. And he tells me, going on a trip with his cars. <laughs> He'll take it to a room and just play with his cars. He'll set up Mazo. He'll set up tracks. Mm-hmm. It once was really, really, really full. Look at all that those treasures at the bottom. Dump it out. Let's put it where we'll put everything. Dump, Dump it out. We'll put yeah! it where we'll put they got very screamy and excited about being allowed to dump out toys. So I'm just doing a voiceover on this part. But this was at the bottom of the Duplo bin. The stuff they hadn't seen in maybe six months, maybe longer, as long as we've been keeping Duplos in it. And we actually have two Duplo sets. One that's a Duplo train, battery a battery operated train, and then all the other Duplos that are not that, a lot of different Duplo sets. So the next thing we decided to do was to separate those two sets because Jackson, my youngest, really loves his train. He got it from Santa for Christmas. And so he wanted all of that to be in one thing that he could grab his bin and then build his Duplo Lego train set. Uh -huh. We have two remaining categories, okay? We have 
city. Hello. City building creation. And then we have train tracks. This is stuff to go up to Becca's room. And these are clothes for laundry that were in the toy bins. Okay. All right. Let's sort the two piles and then we'll deal with what to put them in, okay? All right. Let's deal with this pile. Oh, you can, you can do it that way if you want. Guys, you want to help Brennan dump this one? Yes. Yeah, I These large baskets from West Elm have held up so well. They sit at the foot of the boy's bed and captures all their toys that they keep in their, in their room. My boys share a room. The one bin will be filled up with just train track set pieces. These are pieces that have been in our family for 20 plus years. My nephew is now turning 22 this year and my mom bought them for him. So these train tracks have been in our family for decades and when my kids outgrow them and they're done with them I will give them to my nieces and nephews who are younger and they will have them um, and they've held up the wooden train tracks Thomas train tracks they've held up so well my kids draw on them <laughs> but they use them to create full cities and as a minimalist now in a minimalist home they have so much floor space to create and build and design these train track cities and connect one city in one room to another room okay all right your train bin and then your city building stuff do you want that downstairs for a while oh. uh -huh. yeah. yeah okay there's a step that probably seems really weird but it's a step i didn't used to do before discovering minimalism all the stuff that was remaining after an organizational project needed to go where it needed to go in the rest of the house. Uh, you know, books on the bookshelves upstairs, clothes in the laundry, all of Becca's Barbie stuff back up with her dollhouse upstairs. And it's all stuff that needed to go back in its home before minimalism stuff didn't have a home elsewhere in the house and so it would just stay wherever we cleaned up and then get mixed back in and create clutter within 10 minutes and so putting everything back in its home is part of cleanup for us now and it's a step that helps uh you know keep our home organized okay everything in this box is trash and then this truck is broken also trash and then this box will be recycling this is what's been chosen for donation so far. And this is where they ended up. It's, it's not pretty, but it's organized. Each category that they chose to hang on to is in its own bin. And then in there, we have trains and train tracks. They want downstairs now. Duplos empty bin, uh, hot wheels, number blocks, dominoes, figurines, just dinosaurs, Iron Man, Paw Patrol, Jenga, Mazo, building like cities and stuff, Lincoln Logs, Magna Tiles, Gravitrex, Duplo Trade Set. Um, this is compatible with the ones in here. Uh, but that's just like a special trade building one. All right. It's okay for now. It's good enough for now. I think what I'll do next is tidy up my desk. And just work my way around the room one section at a time. I have my desk here in the family room because this is the center of where the kids spend so much time. And so if I'm working or I'm just doing, you know, household administration stuff, they're all still in the same room with me. It's all here. Plus the visual part of my desks, I like it to be tidy. So when it's not, it gets me to tidy it up. Essentially, it's just paperwork I need to deal with, which I'm not doing as part of this. 
Next, I'm gonna do what's on top of the fireplace. I'd love for there to be nothing up here. <laughs> this has been here for three months. These are the advent cards that went here. <laughs> and I wanted to type myself a list of the ideas I came up with so I had a reference. And then I'm gonna reuse these next year. I'm just gonna roll them back up and put them in their advent sock. I don't know why this is here. I mean, I don't even know what this is. This is my husband's doing. I have no idea what that is. This is a lamp without a bulb. So yeah, okay. Uh, oh my stars, okay. More books. I'm inching my way closer to dealing with books. Reading is definitely one of my hobbies, gardening and journaling are my hobbies. I've talked about hobby clutter recently and books are are huge in our house. They're in every room. We have hundreds and hundreds of books. It's not something I'm a minimalist about, but it is disorganized in our life right now and I would very much like it to not be disorganized. So I will film a book, a home library book organization video soon. Well done. Just needs to be cleaned. needs to be dusted a little bit. <laughs> I am a wee bit embarrassed to show you that, but I also want you to understand how real it is on this channel. That is three months of dust on the fireplace, which means I probably have not dusted the rest of the room in three months. I've cleaned the floors. I've maybe vacuumed the couch. Uh, we didn't organize toys at all this year. So, I mean, probably since the end of 2021, did I really give this room a nice deep clean? So I am doing that for the rest of the video. I am going in every corner. The first step for me is always to sweep up all the miscellaneous Legos and trash. And then I, I vacuum next to get all the things that the sweeping didn't get. And then I mop so that I'm not mopping dust particles and trash and dirt into the hardwood floors. Um, I adore my cordless vacuum. I never thought I would say I adore a vacuum, <laughs> but going cordless uh, about, I don't know, six months ago was a game changer on a cleaning side. It's so easy for me to vacuum up the whole house. I can actually vacuum our entire house, 2,000 square feet, which is an obnoxious amount of square feet. Yes, I understand. But I can do the whole thing on one battery uh, with this particular vacuum. This vacuum cost me around $150, maybe $175. I was hesitant at first. I was considering a Dyson, but that really wasn't budget friendly for me at the time. Uh, my friend has a vac has a Dyson and everyone who has a Dyson raves about the Dysons, but I went with this, you know, less than $200 cordless vacuum and I love it. This mop is a spray mop. I use it more of a sp as a spot mop uh, for any, you know, spots during the week between moppings, but I actually mopped this whole family room floor with this spray mop. We are hours into this project now, helping the kids with their toys and cleaning. I was getting pretty tired, so I decided to do it in sections for the day uh, to avoid exhaustion and to make sure I did a really good job on each section. I just took it one corner at a time and tried to do the tasks in groups. So I dusted all at once and then I swept one section at a time and then decided to move furniture to do another section, took breaks, allowed myself some rest, played with the kids, made some lunch. I really took my time on this project and it turned into like a 25 minute video, but it probably took me close to four to five hours of doing this to do it, you know, thoroughly and to my satisfaction. Um, and I didn't rush. I took my time. I thought about repositioning the furniture and how I wanted it to go in the room um, and just did each section so that if I needed to stop, I, I had sections that were done and could be revisited a, in another day. I was able to power through and do it all um, because I had paced myself and took breaks. This room is a very practical room for us. It has the kids' desk where they have their computer, my desk, the toy shelf. This is where we watch movies and the kids have their shows. Um, it's a place where we gather when we have company. 
and it's right next to the kitchen and it's kind of an open floor plan. So when we are in here, you can also see the kitchen and the hallway and the closet on the side. So it's kind of an open concept in this section of the house. And I really just wanted to give it a nice refresh. Now that spring is here, I wanted to make sure <laughs> it was cleaned up and the gravity of stuff on that toy shelf was dealt with. Now that it's organized, I feel a lot better about it. I don't think the kids care one way or the other. Um, and so I just wanted to make sure that this room was, you know, had some flowers in it and was cleaned up. And I knew there was a lot of stuff under the couches and under the toy shelf just from prior weekly vacuum. <laughs> I knew there was stuff that I was just skipping. And so this time uh, on this round, I gave the floors a really good cleaning and all the furniture are dusting. I vacuumed the couch and just got everything kind of reset for the springtime. Do you like changing rooms around, like moving furniture to different, different spots and giving rooms refresh? Is this something like abnormal that I like to do every couple of months or do you guys do this too? I just really like to change it up, give it a fresh face, put furniture in a different spot. This room is a little tough to do that because of where the television is and the design of our sectional sofa. There's only so many ways it can be positioned so that you're actually comfortably watching television. I thought about trying to create like two parallel rows of the couches and have them not connected as a sectional um, and fate, but still facing the television. But when I sat down and tried to do that, you can't really watch TV comfortably that way. So I ended up putting the room back together in a similar way. I just pulled the couch far away from this banister and, and gave it like some space. So basically where the couch is right now while I'm cleaning is where the couch will end up when I'm done cleaning um, up everything. So comment below and make me feel better about changing my room up every couple of months. Do you guys do that as well? Do you change up rooms? Do you just take some things out or maybe add some flowers to a room for spring? Just something that gives it like a facelift or a refresh. I really enjoy doing that. So here is where I was thinking the couches would go, but it looks awful. Um, and so I just decided to take that opportunity to use my little hand vac. I use this hand vacuum on the couches, on furniture, and on the steps. It's just the easiest thing to kind of knock out the carpeted steps and clean up this uh, couch. I also use it on the uh, mattresses in our house. I put some baking soda down for a day when I'm cleaning the mattresses and I use this hand vac to clean that up. It keeps a charge very, very well. It's called the pet eraser. So it also sucks up dog hair. The dog is not allowed on the couches, but dog hair ends up everywhere. If you have a dog that sheds, you know this to be true. Dog hair ends up everywhere. Even if the little doggy is not allowed on the couches and is not allowed on the beds, hair ends up everywhere. I mean, it ends up in the ice cube trays in our house. It, my dog sheds so much. So this is where I ended up positioning the couch. It's pulled out from the banister, a little closer to the television. And then I decided to create like a reading nook in the back section of the room. This is my grandmother's table. This table is 50 years old at least. So it's, you know, a vintage antique table. And I added that lamp and I, and I put a light bulb <laughs> into the lamp since it was sitting on the fireplace without a light bulb and just added some books and some fresh flowers that I got from a local nursery just to brighten up the room and, and give it a spring feel and a spring vibe. So this is kind of where I ended up with this space. Let me show you how the rest of the room worked out. We put the train track bin behind the couch under the window, kind of next to this reading nook so that they could drag out their train track bin and create train tracks behind the couch because now there's a nice big space. All of my kids are learning to play the piano. This was an interest they had. So I bought this piano from Amazon and it rests here on top of this. Uh, this is their kids desk that they have here. And then this is the span of the room from where you enter the room. I added some fresh flowers to their toy shelf just to give it a nice cool spring vibe. I used one of their toy baskets to house the plant um, and 
this is how the shelf ended up. It, it's organized. It's not pretty, but it's organized, which means it's practical for my family. It's, you know, practical minimalism for us. They don't have hundreds and hundreds of toy categories anymore. This is what they have for their toys. And then my daughter has some Barbies and some doll stuff in her room as well. Oh, and of course, everybody has Legos. There's Legos in our library slash living room on the uh, adjacent side of the house. And then everybody has Legos in their bedroom as well. And now we have a cozy and clean family room for the springtime. I hope you enjoyed this video. Would love for you to subscribe and join our family here on YouTube. And here's another video.